Coastal dunes and wetlands are part of the natural habitats that protect two-thirds of the U.S. coastline from hurricanes and storm surge. In 1982, the United States Congress passed Public Law 97348, the Coastal Barrier Resources Act. Using a subsidy denial approach, the law seeks to discourage development and preserve valuable natural resources associated with undeveloped coastal barrier lands. The legislation was co-authored by the late Senator John Chafee of Rhode Island and former Congressman Tom Evans of Delaware. Just within less than a mile of here, there are two towers that were erected back at just before the Second World War. They were way back in the dunes. Now you can take a look at them. They're not too far from the ocean. The barrier lands are the first line of, line of defense for the wetlands. Wetlands are, are priceless, and we've destroyed many, many, many millions of acres of wetlands in, in America. And it doesn't make any sense because they provide spawning grounds for fish and shellfish, sport fishing, commercial fishing, oystering, clamming. All of these things are so important to the tourist industry and, and important to people's lives. The Coastal Barrier Resources Act, signed into law by President Ronald Reagan, is actually one of the more successful environmental policies in the history of the United States, although very few people have ever heard of it. If you've ever been walking along a beach, uh, a developed beach, and you get to a point where the development just completely stops and you seem to cross some invisible barrier and there's nothing beyond that point, most likely you've encountered a control line set up by that law. It's a congressional, uh, congressional act. Now that law does not say that you can't develop those beaches. All it says is if you develop them, you're not going to have federal subsidies for uh, uh, flood insurance and uh, for repairs after storms and so forth. That's been a huge deterrent for people. It hasn't completely stopped development, but saying we won't give you these subsidies has a big effect on the calculations that people make. And so it has effectively stopped development along uh, a lot of parts of the coastline uh, of the country. It was a law that was passed in a collaboration between conservative people in Congress concerned about subsidies and liberals concerned about the environment. Uh, and uh, the, the effect has been um, quite dramatic along our coastlines. COBRA, when it first passed, it brought together Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives across the board, and all of them, all of them said, this makes a lot of sense. It's free market oriented. You don't stop development, but you do discourage development by eliminating subsidies from the American taxpayer. Since its implementation in 1982, the Coastal Barrier Resources Act has saved U.S. taxpayers billions of dollars in federal subsidies. You need to save valuable land that's important to our economy and important for, for the future. And you need, to, you need to save some money. It may not stop sea level rise, but it sure will save some lives. And that, that, that's incalculable. Today, there are more than 3.1 million acres of coastal barrier habitat in the system. Shunning the environmental benefits, development interests periodically pressure lawmakers to have parcels of this land removed from the system and exempted from protection. To date, these efforts have not had widespread success, but the possibility is always looming. This area is, is one of the units of the Coastal Barrier Resources System. Florida and a lot, of the, a lot of the east and the Gulf Coast, tremendous amount of the economy is based on natural resources, natural resource-based economy. So these areas provide habitat, they provide protection for the built environment. We ought to be augmenting those. Where subsidies are removed that stimulate development in storm-prone, flood-prone areas. We still have substantial subsidies going on for coastal development and redevelopment, for, for uh, people rebuilding in risky places. Uh, we still have a lot of subsidies going on to local governments uh, when they get hit by storms and so forth. And 
So there's discussion in Congress about how do we do this intelligently and help people in the wake of a disaster, but yet cut back on uh, the writing of blank checks for rebuilding in risky places. We may not have more storms, but we have more intense storms, and I think that's, that's clear. And whether that's a cycle of nature or whether it's mankind, in part, I think it's both, uh, you still have to adapt to it. If we could have a combination of local government, state government, federal government working in cooperation with the private sector, we can plan for a future where there's less exposure to storms and sea level rise and we get better quality habitat for the future.